So I wake up at 5.40 in the morning. Orders start coming out at 6, so that gives me enough time to get my coffee and have a sit. I have been with Shipped for five years, give or take. Did uh, shopping on the weekends mainly for the first three years until February of 2020 when I decided to go full-time after leaving my office job. It was really great at first. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things have changed since the Target buyout. Before I was doing, uh, on a slow day it would be 10, uh, on a busy day 15, 16 in a day. Now, on a good day, I'm seeing seven or eight, and on a bad day, I'm seeing zero, one, maybe two. V1 was solely based on the amount, uh, like the cost of the order, right? It was seven and a half percent plus five dollars. That was your pay. Now, it's a black box algorithm. There is no rhyme or reason. Yeah, it's, it's fallen off a lot. There's a drastic difference. So I first encountered the ship shoppers uh, very early in the pandemic, I think in March 2020, um, when they had created a petition on our website asking for access to protective equipment, hand sanitizer, masks, and all that as they were suddenly you know, facing the challenge of going out and doing their work in the middle of a global pandemic. They're independent contractors outside of the employee classification, but they had some interesting challenges. And I think especially during the pandemic, there was a lot of pressure placed on drivers to go out and get people the things they needed to live and take on the risk that other people weren't willing to take on to go out and go to the grocery store. And they were celebrated, you know, as uh, essential workers. And but they found, you know, they were treated as though they were disposable. They were seeing some changes in the way they were being paid. Um, and so workers were starting to report that their pay seemed irregular or they used to be paid this amount for this kind of a job and they noticed that all of a sudden it was different. And that was around the same time that the company was starting to put out some kind of vague statements. We're making updates to the way you're compensated to make it more fair and more accurate. And I think the unique thing about Shipped, which I think attracted a lot of drivers to it in the early days, was that compensation was very transparent. And so they had created a petition on our platform. Um, and I you know, was like, oh, cool, I'll reach out to these workers. And quickly was put in touch with Willie, who was you know, the petition creator, was someone in San Antonio. Hey, Willie. Hey, Dan, how's it going? My name is Willie Solis, and I'm a ship shopper. I also do uh, DoorDash, uh, Instacart, um, Uber Eats, and uh, I also work in a retail store. What drew me to Shipped was that it was a very low bar of entry at the time, and Shipped was offering something where I could jump in and, and immediately start earning income. And so at the time, it seemed like a very viable option for me. It provided a lot of flexibility as far as uh, scheduling was concerned as well. So I was able to work at my own times and my own, my own uh, um, destiny, so to speak. And so I decided that it was a good opportunity for me. I noticed that the pay was changing in January um, of, of 2020. And that's when I first started taking notice that it was changing in several different cities like Kalamazoo, Michigan and San Antonio, Texas. And I wanted to find out if it was going to eventually affect me here in Dallas-Fort Worth. I decided to do something about this when um, I, I started hearing stories of other workers. Um, I initially uh, wanted to find out for myself, is this gonna eventually gonna affect me? That was my whole intent at first. But when I started hearing the stories and how impactful it was for, for other workers, I started getting really pissed off. When people were complaining about this, it, it was very clear that something else needed to happen, something above just complaining on Facebook groups. We needed to to organize and do something about it. I decided to start taking account and, and, and notes. And one of the biggest things that we found quickly was that I needed to be able to prove that this was actually happening, that people were losing income. And so what I ended up doing was in taking screenshots from, from different workers from across the country. They were sending them in to me 
and I was I was actually putting them inputting them into my computer and and trying to figure out um, and analyze what it is that 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 the pay cut was and how bad it w was was uh, actually showing in the numbers. The majority of it was done on my cell phone, where ship shoppers would send me uh, screenshots, and I would I would take that information on my cell phone itself and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. It was a it was a big challenge to migrate all that information from the uh, telephone screen, from the screenshot that I was being sent over to the Excel program on on the actual phone. I ended up having to go through the process for 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 a good while on my own. And um, I happened to, um, to to think about it this a little bit more deeply and, and, and wonder how I could make this process a little bit faster because it was just so time consuming. I remembered um, having spoken to Drew at, at Coworker and having a conversation with him. So I said, cool, like you've got all this data. I've got some time and I want to support what you're doing. Send it, send me everything you've got. And so I started, you know, aligning the formatting on different spreadsheets. You know, we got all of the data that had already been entered together into a sheet. And then these screenshots kept pouring in because at the time we were starting to do this, it was the, the V2 algorithm was being rolled out. And so by that point, we had maybe five or 600 data points. And it was pretty tedious, you know, to, to do that transcription. But I was able to start looking at the data. They were trying to create the same thing that I was creating. Um, but it was uh, very time consuming for them as well. And it became so time consuming that he started reaching out to other people to see if there was another way of doing this more feasibly. So I talked to my coworker, Will Neda Negron, who, uh, you know, she was our policy person at Coworker and she has a lot of connections with other institutions. And she mentioned this guy, Dan, uh, at MIT, who was doing a lot of research uh, in the gig economy stuff and who she said was a data expert. And I said, great, like, put me in touch. Let's, let's talk. And by the, t the time that I was introduced to Drew, they had a few hundred screenshots that they had transcribed into a Google Sheet. And I was immediately hooked because this, to me, was this, like, this amazing opportunity to actually understand how gig workers experience translated into like their pay, into their material condition. It's a really hard thing to study. There's not a lot of data, not a lot of research about actual worker conditions. Most of it is released just by uh, the companies themselves. It's not from the perspective of the worker. So this project excited me because it was. It was worker-led. It's driven by measuring the experience of workers themselves. So when I first got connected with Drew, uh, I, I saw a spreadsheet. And this is the spreadsheet that Drew and Willie were putting together uh, and centralizing all the screenshot data from. And basically what I saw side by side was the spreadsheet and then the screenshots that the spreadsheet was being developed from. And immediately I knew that we could build something that made this process way faster, way more efficient. Within a couple of days, I put together a script that would take the screenshots, parse them, dump them into the spreadsheet, and produce numbers like the order pay, the date that the order happened, the metro area of the shop, the total tip, when it was delivered, like the delivery window. And we had something that could take a screenshot and add data in the structured way. The next step was to try and figure out how to scale. To do that, we made this into a texting service where people could text the screenshots and that same script would take the screenshot, parse it, dump it into a Google Sheet. Shoppers from across the country contributed to the evidence gathering that we were trying to do. Without their help and their support, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish any of the things that we, we accomplished. There's a passion that's required in order for it to, to be successful. There has to be some, some push behind behind the effort in order for it to be to be able to, to to come to fruition. You can't just put it together in an app. You have to have people that actually care about the issues to bring it forth into the light. I think this has application with other apps, Uber, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Instacart, Grubhub, basically all the gig apps um, that, that are currently operating in this space right now in the gig economy. Would, uh, would benefit from, from having a tool such as this available to the workers. Yeah.
This developed organically, so, so much so that it's very difficult to give anyone a roadmap on how to organize. But um, I will say that one of the things that we did was to reach out to a, a lot of organizations and, and have conversations with various different organizations that were all saying that they could help us in one way, shape, or form. We were very selective about who we worked with. And the reason why we were very selective is because I was afraid of, of, the, uh, of being exploited, of being taken advantage of. And so uh, one thing I would tell anyone else trying to organize and, and have conversations about this type of thing would be to um, be careful who you work with um, because there's a lot, of com a lot of organizations out there that want to take the information that you're providing and, and be exploitative and take advantage of you. A tool like this allows us the opportunity and the ability to be able to give someone that's in a position of, of being exploited power back and giving them agency over the, the way that they, they feel.